for the season one finale, we paired two filmmakers who never met but have much in common, Hector Tapia Aguilar and Veronica Stickelman. Hector is a Mexican-born director and cinematographer who works in both Philadelphia and Mexico City. Hector's work spans narrative and documentary film, and he is the director of photography of Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia, directed by previous Forte guest, Kyra Knox. Veronica is a Mexican-American producer and director who splits her time between LA and Philadelphia. She has spent the last 13 years focused on documentaries and docuseries, and most recently produced the Emmy award-winning six-part CNN series, Lincoln, Divided We Stand. Here's Hector and Veronica. I'm from originally from Mexico City. I uh, just moved uh, here to Philly probably four to five years ago. Um, so yeah, but I, I lived my, my whole life in, in Mexico. And then um, I like focus on the camera department like five years ago. Actually, when I got here, like I, I decided to go like just to the, to the camera department as a cinematographer. Uh, so yeah, but I've been like in the industry for more than 15, 15 years now. Why don't you uh, tell me more, more about yourself? Uh, so my name is Veronica Stickelman. I am a producer and director. I worked uh, pretty much exclusively, almost exclusively in documentary or uh, reality sometimes too. My family is originally from Guadalajara. My mom was born, my mom was the first born in the U.S. in L.A. And uh, for some reason, my family said, let's go to New Jersey and have a kid. And there I was. I didn't start out to be a producer at all. Um, I found myself there through a, a series of uh, mishaps and fun. And I've been drawn to directing more so lately. And I've also been looking a lot at narrative more lately as well. Now, now that you now that you say like you're more drawn into directing, I think that was my kind of like you know uh, I reached a point that I said like okay here in the U.S. it's so much different like more structure uh, the the industry like uh, compared to Mexico City. So I I decided like I need to focus on on something. I mean it's not like you can you you can't do that like here here in the u.s like you can be you know how to jack of all trades they say like but it's not like i i don't think that's the best like the best move here in the u.s in mexico you can do all of that if you have your your media company as i said but yeah mm -hmm. definitely uh i reached a point that i said i i need to focus on something and, and then that gave me uh the the structure that i needed because i was you know uh, all these years after working for the TV channel for uh, like five years in a row editing, I was all over, you know, the, yeah, all over the place, but in a, in a good way, because I, I was learning from all of this, you know, uh, uh, positions, you know, so, yeah. but I never uh, focus or specialize uh, on, on, on one. So I think that was, that was a good switch, uh, for me, uh, working in the in the in the U.S. industry, like I, I I needed that structure, I needed that focus, and it's and it I think it's it's paying off. I think yeah, it's interesting. I think I'm always fascinated by somebody who is like newer in the industry, whatever for whatever the reason, and they they know exactly what they want to do, and I'm going to do that only that thing, and I think that it's often. Um, to the detriment of that person to do that early in their career. Because I, you, like, you think you know what a job is. Like, in general, you think you know what life is. And then when you realize you have no idea, uh, the fact that you have these other experiences makes you better at the job. It's kind of this gift that, okay, now I know what this all tastes like. It's like doing a rotation, a medical rotation. It's like, now I know what this tastes like. And I really like this like I like living in this world right like may I don't know if you chose camera out of practicality and you can tell me did you choose it like did you choose camera department out of practicality because the Philadelphia market just like needs more <laughs> people doing camera department stuff or did you choose it because it's like you know what I'm tired of the rigmarole of like 
trying to run a business and getting clients and working with clients and whatever. And I just want to watch other people have to do that and solve their problem. Yeah, it, it was a little bit of both. Uh, yeah. I don't think Philly, the Philly industry needs another camera guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It feels like the same, like three people are like stretched too thin. You just need more good people. I don't know. Maybe that's just my perspective perspective. Maybe that's just because people I work with only want to hire the same people. Yeah. yeah. It was a little bit of both. I, I guess it it was also like I was diving deep, you know, uh within, you know, myself. It was like more of a personality decision. Because I, I think I I reached like my I don't know how to say but my ceiling or my roof in in terms of direct in terms of directing you know because of my personality like uh, I know I know they there there are like really good like low profile directors like quiet directors I I know the and but I I I didn't feel that way like I I didn't feel like I was made for for that because directing for me it was more about like social skills that I, at that at that moment I, I never felt like that that I had you know like good like social skills like the ability to communicate well my ideas and I obviously I was developing because if, if you're a director of photography you you, you need that too you, yeah. you actually need the to communicate your your ideas to to your uh, department but I, I felt like I wasn't doing like, you know, uh, all the creative stuff that that I would love to do it like every day, you know, since I was drowned into, you know, all, all of this, you know, coordinating stuff like, you know, administration, uh, payroll, all of that. And then I, I was drawn by that, like, and then cre the creative, uh, the creative side, the creative angle of, of, of myself, it was like, it doesn't exist. And then I said, like, I, I want to quit. I want to quit this for good. So I reached that point. And then I, and then I like, paused for a moment. And then I said, do you really want to quit? Or what do you really, what do you want to quit for what you've been doing like this, uh, this years? I, I, I felt like I wasn't doing what I love, you know, like I wasn't delivering what I wanted to deliver. So you know little by little you know the the pieces were like uh coming together uh and then i said like yeah and and i feel like really comfortable i like myself my personality behind the camera and managing like a small team or a medium sized team you know so that that was like okay uh i think that's it you know i think that's it so you know so many sets look homogenous, right? So many sets look, um, and that can cause conflict, but it's already hard. It's also already hard enough because you have so many different types of skill sets and personalities come together. So like for you, how do you foster and why is it important to foster a set that everybody feels like it's an inclusive set? It's, it's a place people can speak up. It's a place people can like, what's that like for you? Yeah, it's, so for me it's 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 really really important uh it's uh i think it's it reflects you know the the atmosphere and set reflects on 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 camera and the final product i'm i'm pretty sure about that uh and the the last few years i was like trying to always look to to work along with you know more 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 than colleagues just just colleagues like friends you know like i really I think I what I really I don't know like built uh, relationships during this uh, these years of really good friends, good uh, even friends that at some at some point they were I consider my mentors, you know. So that's that's super important to me. Um, and then I, I yeah I said uh, when I when I see something like it's or. When I hear something like uh, this guy or or I don't know this this woman treated someone like like shit or something on set, it's like it's it's for me it's it's unacceptable. Like I I I never experienced that myself. 
but I hear it like I hear it so much like that happens a lot on set we're all there because we are compelled to do this and we spend all this time and all this effort to be there why be an asshole why be <laughs> miserable why yeah. why 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 and like I think top down a set a director a producer can ruin the tone for somebody and ruin somebody's day and make them not want to be there, but they are in a, they're in a position of power and they have to be there. And they, once somebody feels like they have to be on a set, you failed as a producer or director. That's it. Because, yeah. and I, and I don't think you have to understand everybody's what everybody's coming through or whatever, but like people just want to be heard and seen. It's like a very simple human thing. Like, it's interesting. You said you want to work with friends, right? You know, you may not know your PA, but you want your PA to have a good time. I feel, I find I have, I've had the most, the proudest moments and times where somebody walks away from a project and then messages me later and says, or says it to somebody else, like that was the funnest project. And I'm so proud of it. Wow. If you're like, Oh, that was, that looked cool. That, that yeah that that came out really good and you don't say I had a great experience then you've I feel like you failed like it can look wonderful without being an asshole it's possible many people do it and I don't really understand this like creative genius thing that like oh you know he's like and I say he I'm sure there are women like the two they're they're just in their head and like you have to just like deal with it no you 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 don't tell them to get therapy. They'll still be creative. They'll still be talented, and they don't have to treat yeah. people poorly. And and on top of it, right? You said it. You said it yourself. Like we are, you're going towards a creative vision, and you, nobody's in your head, right? Like, and translating that is part of the process of of challenging ourselves, right? Like. The product is the thing that lives on and that gives you the the recollection of memory, gives you the the reminds you of the people that were there, like you saw every morning, your, you know, your COVID officer shoving a thing up your nose every morning. You're like, oh yeah, I love that guy. You yeah. know. <laughs> but like, but but I agree. I think the the thing that happens when people enjoy themselves on set is they care. Like if it was just your, your entire show and your entire thing, you're not growing. I agree with you 100%. I think that different perspectives create things that you couldn't even dream of. Yeah, I think, and, and you said like the, the bottom line is you don't have to be, you know, an asshole. You have to, 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 to deliver a, like a, or to have quality control, you know, it's, you can do both. You can care about your people and then you can deliver a, a great, uh, you can deliver a masterpiece if you want, you know? And then, and then people, people of your, of the crew of your set, they're gonna, they're gonna remember more the experience working with you than the, the movie or the product itself. You know, they're going to be, yeah. So yeah. I think it's important. I think it's key to be, to be a good person every time, you know, yeah. to, to be a leader, to be, to care to, to care for your, for your team. You know, it's, it's super, it's super important. Yeah. More than, I, more than the freaking movie or more than the product. Like it's. Those weird. things are just, it, I mean, I always, it was an expression I learned a long time ago. It's just television. Like. Yeah. Something's going wrong. You have a problem. Well, okay, we're all affected by this problem. Do we have a solution? Do we want to come together to make a solution? Do you guys want to be quiet to let me think of what solution? There's a there's somewhere to go. You you if you're sitting there mad and processing your anger and out on people who are also in the same situation as you, you're wasting time and money yeah. and you're also like being really mean <laughs> yeah. so it's yeah. like there's no winning in that like um you know there's really no winning in it and I think people think that you have to have this the, there's this like old idea that in order to be a good you know there you want to be a 
a, a shrewd business person. You want to be like a monster creative. And it's like, that's just a character people made up. <laughs> like I'm sure those people exist. And then they, a team around them protected them because that's their job, right? Yeah. Um, what, what do you think uh, from a producer's director's standpoint, like what do you think they can uh, do better in order to to be more inclusive uh, on all of their their productions? I think there's a there the first thing that comes to mind is education, and I don't mean education and like in production. I mean education and people. I I think that you know we we so often hire who we know because like we know how it's going to work right and sometimes that doesn't work and if you're hiring if you're working on a subject matter and you're hiring people who might if you get an inkling might be affected by that subject matter know about the language around that how that affects them how can you like warn them how can you how can you understand somebody else's experience and and educate yourself without having to be educated on set? Um, and that can mean a lot of things. Uh, just flat out, like know who's working for you. <laughs> know people's names, you know? Know people, you know, ask people who they are on set, uh, communicate. Like, I know we're all focused and, and busy and we have a lot of decisions to make every day but those are the people doing that stuff for you. Um, and, and the other, the so God, knowing somebody's name <laughs> on set as the director goes such a long way. Because I remember my like early days PAing and stuff like, well, I didn't pay that much, but like, I remember my early days just being, I just thought I had to know who everybody who was directing and producing was as a matter of respect. Like that's what my brain was just like, okay, these are the people in charge. I have to know like everything about them. So they feel good about like what they're doing and they feel confident and they're gonna <laughs> go the, I do that the other way too, right? Like do that the other way too. Who's working for you? What do they want? Where do they want to go? Like, does your AD want to stay in AD? Hopefully, because if they're good, oh God, stay ADs when you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, does, you know, does, is your, it does is do you have a PA that like wants to get into G and E and you can make sure they they like hang around the department more, like it's a, it's like simple things that you can do or you can have your crew around you look out for, and with their looking out for it, it it just it it all it all just moves around in that um, environment, and hiring. I mean, it's really this is where it gets tricky, right? Because consciously hiring a diverse crew is, um, is not impossible. It can be done. But like you said, people want to work with, like we said this, like you want to yeah. work with your friends. <laughs> you do. You want to know that your department's going to run like without, it's like, you don't change your starting lineup in the yeah. finals. Yes. <laughs> It's like planning a trip with, you know, with friends, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, you're somebody's Thank like, you. I want to bring my girlfriend. You're like, oh, wild card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think it's, it's needed though. Like it's, it's definitely, uh, yeah. because we're a lot of people trying to work, <laughs> trying to get gigs. And yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's needed. I think it's needed to to be you know to to make that a conscious decision or a systematic decision you know uh to to bring inclusivity on set because yeah. otherwise it it would take like years decades to to make that that switch you know yeah. or even even it, it's not going to happen if if it's not like systematic you know no no the other thing is I find that people often do like, like they do incubators, right? Like, it's like, oh, I'm going to bring this. I'm going to make sure that like these interns and this, and I was like, no, but pay attention. 
None of them grow within your company. Pay attention. None of them move up within your set. You need to partner with somebody who's already doing it, who doesn't look like you, who isn't from the same walk of life as you in a leadership position. That is how you you create an environment where, okay, they're going to hire who they know and that they're in their community, probably. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe so. But you don't, you can't, um, you know, there's, there's ways I don't have answers. I have like, I'm trying to do these things. I'm trying to enact things that I think will create um, unconscious perception shifts or whatever. But I wonder too, like, I, I wanted to ask you earlier and I'm, I hope that I, we can go down this road, but you know, Mexico city is a huge production yeah. like city. And it's been that way for a very long time. Did you experience coming into the U.S. markets, like people being like, are you sure? Like, did you experience any of that? Or because, you know, it, it's it's it it blows my mind <laughs> how many people have they're like, like, yeah, I'm going to Mexico for a month. Is there Internet there? These are Internet there. Like, where do you think I'm going? They 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 still see us like we're like riding donkeys and everything and with cats. No, I mean I get it. I get it. But it's it's I don't. What do you mean you get it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like what's what's the what's the information with uh the industry in Mexico is 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 it's been it's been growing a lot like during these years and it's it's been the, the thing about the thing about the, the the industry, I think it's like it's it's big. Like it's oversaturated, but at the same time, you know the big the big gigs are like just for for you know just a handful of media companies, and then mm -hmm. uh, we Mexicans are like I think we're warm welcomers. At the, if if that if that's a word, like we always try to be warm with new people with foreigners uh we always try to you know be really good hosts you know uh we're always trying to invite you for 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 lunch for dinner and uh, come to my come to my place and have a good time and uh we're we're like that like we're warm people you know uh so probably that's a double edged sword because there's you know there's a lot of people that come from for example south america and then suddenly you 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 have like all these key roles uh filled by 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 these creative and talented people from from south america so i think uh, even if, if they are like the, at the same level of talent you know in, for example key roles like director and director of photography they are gonna they are gonna choose uh someone from yeah from south america from argentina brazil uruguay uh so suddenly we're invaded again like because we're cool you know cool people you know and, uh it's i don't know like it's it's uh i think we we have it in our dna like you know the the, the, the invasion i don't know how to say it, but we're we're conquered we were conquered and we're still being conquered you know and it's and it's and it's and it's so easy but at the same time we're warriors you know so uh w yeah we were we were conquered but we're still fighting the fight you know we're still trying to say like hey i'm not we're here man like we can do it too and we we're, we're good at what we do you know so yep. that that's our like never ending fight you know like uh welcoming people but at the same time it's don't go too far, you, you know. Don't go too far because I, I'm, I'm, I'm good too, and I can do it too. So don't, don't take my. So let's collaborate, but don't, don't go too far, you know. Yeah. Um, do you carry that with you in the in the U.S. market? Is there any of that that you like feel like you use, or you, or it works against you in in coming? In well, I think it. I think it, it was like. Uh, it, it was a good thing because you know uh you're always looking for you know 
for new routes, for new for new ways of of breaking it, you know. Um, so mm-hmm. I think it's it's uh, the, you know the interior warrior uh, in every Mexican. It's like we're we're the the hustle never stops. We're always trying to you know get your your to get your way, and then uh, you're you're used to you know you're used to fight. You're used to uh, you know to. Yeah, to speak up, you have all you you always have to speak up for yourself, uh, and then, yeah, it's I think it's a it's a matter of just to be, be consistent with what you want. Be obviously you have to be smart. You have to, but you you have to keep pushing all the time. So that's that's uh, the Mexican the Mexican way. We don't yeah. we don't take no, uh, for an answer. So yeah, we always look for shortcuts. We're always looking for ways of of doing it it's the 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 mexican way so i think that that was that was important to me um not to settle here uh to say okay i I can only do like uh camera uh, i can i can only do camo p for example that's that's that what they are giving me and that's it I'll, i'll settle and no you 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 have to show up. You have to show your your skills. You have to you have to speak up. And then, yeah, being coming from from a country like that, like you're always you know hustling. It's it was a good thing. It was it was a, an advantage, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's interesting. The thing, two things you just said, which is you speak up, but you hustle, right? A lot of people will speak up. And be like, this is what I want to do. I see you doing this. I want to do this. But then if you don't, if you don't show up for that person, they're not going to give you yeah. that opportunity. Yeah. And it's, it's really actually that simple, right? Like it's that simple. Just do your job well and tell somebody you, you want to do, you like what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and when they move, you will move. And that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting though. Like to st- I never really thought about it being a like a cultural thing that that kind of fight, but I guess it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess it makes sense. I was, I was also taught that. <laughs> I I have a lot of you know uh, colleagues and people that know me from Mexico that they are asking how's how's the the U.S. experience like how's working with the gringos you know and, and it's been. <laughs> it's been amazing so far it's been an amazing amazing experience uh at least to me you know it's it's that's yeah. my that's my story it's been amazing um they are there are a lot of advantages uh here uh and i always recommend like to try it because it's you know every experience that challenges you uh and then you you take that leap of faith you're yeah, there, there's not the equation is like you're you're gonna grow from that experience like no matter what you know so it's it's growth it's yep. information even if, if it's painful even if you you know are broke or something like if because of you there. not getting the, the gigs that you think you're gonna you, you were gonna get uh I, I don't i don't care like just Go take that leap of faith, and I always say that to people. Uh, mm-hmm. It's as as cliche as it sounds, but yeah, Mexico is it's a really it's a good comfort zone, you know, because you can make like decent money to live a really good life uh, mm-hmm. out of filmmaking, but there's you know there's this uh, in the outside world. Uh, waiting for you in in terms of yeah of course money but in terms of new experiences so yeah. I'm always saying like please I beg you to take that leap of faith come and then if I can you know invite you to to work uh with me on on, on one of my projects who my my colleagues are my, my closest friends I always say I I actually from for for a uh, really cool project that we shot in in, in the Catskills in New York. Uh, it was for a mockumentary. 
I hired I hire only uh, the crew from Mexico. And it was an amazing, amazing experience. Wow. But it's, it's impossible to, you know, to to keep that, to maintain that like for long term. Yeah. But I'm I'm always say like, please uh don't, obviously don't don't depend on on on, on me to to bring on uh, projects here, but try it, man. Like it's it's uh it's an amazing experience. So what what would you be like your advice to people that they are like saying I want to go there. I want to go to the U.S. Uh, what do, what do I do? What 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 can I do for, like, even if I'm starting out, what what would you be like your advice for that? Oh man, well, I what's interesting is, I go back to what you said earlier and what you just said now, which is, always be open to learning. There's, yeah. a, you're never, you're never too good for something, right? Like. If you're in a comfort zone and and when I was 35, somebody asked me, what's your five-year plan? Which, what are your goals? And I said, to get really good at this job? Like, I don't, I, I can't, you know what I mean? Like, why would I set a goal at that point when I don't know what I don't know? That's what I, that's, and fortunately I was 35 years old. So I knew like a little bit about life, but, <laughs> but um, I think if you find yourself having kind of conquered everything around you in terms of your own abilities, you're missing out on learning and you won't just learn like skills or growth, even outside of yourself, you'll learn about yourself. And I think that that's not only valuable for your career, career, creative process, but it's a really important thing for you as an individual. And don't forget that like so much people talk about career stuff and they forget that like they don't say like oh right and like you know you might have to work three jobs and like not sleep for a little bit <laughs> because at the end of it like you'll have you know you don't know when something else is going to come or at the end of it you might like have to take a temp job and you know be like doing data entry like who knows what would happen it's not going to be pretty Right. Like I'm not going to paint any any endeavor as if it's this like walk in the park, be authentic and know people, because those two things will land you in places that you can't think of. Right. Like. If you make an impression on somebody with something you're passionate about, that impression will stick and they will think of you when that thing that comes up enters and that'll be the right path for you. You can jam yourself into these like very prestigious paths, right? You, you can apply to the fellowship. You can do this. You can try to have these things that are kind of set up to help you. If you don't have, um, you know, you don't have, a, what do they call it now? Not it's, it's nepotism, but like in the industry, they call it something. I don't know. There's an expression for it. Nepo babies. <laughs> oh, nepo, yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. Like, it's discouraging to know that somebody basically will like will be a must hire or it's discouraging to know that like somebody has years of money to live off of and just focus on creating stuff because they have a camera like it's it's it, it'll be hard to to see that um but don't forget they also have to be good and work and deliver because there are people who have that access and do not use it well. So like, don't get discouraged by knowing that somebody else looks like they have it a little bit easier. Uh, because I think the fight, in the fight, in the, in this, in the like side journeys, <laughs> it's like, like if you're working a temp job for SEC filings, like I did, you, when you, when you're doing that, you, you can learn about the industry. There's no industry that to be seen, but how something's organized, how rules are followed, how contracts are made, how that like how does this how does this apply to the film industry? That's what I was always doing, and because of that, I wound I wound up with a bucket of like skill sets that I would have never gotten in film school, that I would have never gotten by working on set, that I didn't know I would have had unless I was just like I just had these weird jobs, and like now it makes me this whole person, and I think that like you said it earlier, 
like you get the bug for this. You never really, you're never really going to quit. Like you're going to get really tired. Things are going to seem hard. Things are going to seem like they're working against you, especially if you're, you know, BIPOC, especially if you're, you know, if you're a person of color, if you're a woman, if you're disabled, if you're slew of things, right? Like the, the it's working against you. And that is awful and discouraging and very, very tiring. But if you're doing it, you're doing it. Like find the way, because if you step away from it, you'll always have the hunger. Like it's just, it's inescapable. And if you don't, then like, that's fine. Like <laughs> that's fine too. Um, authenticity. Um, know the people who are working on the things that you are passionate about. Let them know that you're passionate about. Don't pretend to be passionate about something you're not. It won't work. You can respect something, but if you're not passionate about it and you, you pretend, it's very transparent. And <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. Or you pretend to like somebody because you know they can like, they you think they can get you somewhere. It's like, it's, it's like more like people, they claim LA is like that. And I'm like, it's, yeah, people do that. And the people who actually can help people are like, yeah, no, I'm not helping you because <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> you don't <laughs> like me. Why are we doing this? Yeah. Um, yeah, don't underrate authenticity. Um, and I think if you're coming from another country or whatever, and you look at this market as a way to challenge and learn and all of that, I think it's a wonderful thing to do. You know, it's it's scary. Like you can't deny that it's, you know, go to, you know, go to another country that has <laughs> a lot of its own stuff as all of our countries do. And you go and, and you're just going to just like be no, like, am I nobody here? Right? Like, what is what are the what's this decade plus of work I've been doing? What's all this? And who cares? Like, who cares? You, you Just because somebody doesn't treat you like you are and a grown up adult who has a ton of experience. If they can't see it when you're working, then do you want to work with them? I don't know. I have a lot of advice, but I, I think too, the other thing I would say too is, is be careful of, of, of advice. Like I've, I've never met anyone who has had this straight line path to, to making a feature narrative film. That was amazing. No one. Do you? Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we all go through the trips, the falls, and all of that are part of it. And it, it uh, you know, you may need a therapist. <laughs> you definitely need your friends and family. Have a support system. Make sure you're with your community. Do not isolate yourself. Uh, if you have friends that are working in the same things as you, like, enjoy that. Oh, my goodness. There's nothing, there's nothing better, right? Yeah. And then not, now that you say, like, don't isolate yourself, like, I, I have a piece of advice for for the for the introverts like me like myself uh, because no one no one in this industry tells you that like you really need to work on your social skills yeah, as hard as it sounds like you really because you know it can be uh, as inclusive as you want but it 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 is still is a relationship industry. It's a mm -hmm. relationships business, so you have to you have to be around. You have to show up. You have to talk to people. You have to communicate. It's really important. Like a one man, uh, one man band filmmaker, it's not gonna take you uh, further. You know, it's not gonna take you um, anywhere. Like you have, you you must develop uh, social skills to be you know to to be working in this industry so it's it's better sooner than later i i learned that later but it doesn't matter like it's never it's it's never too late to to start again to to work on uh you know on one of your you think your your weaknesses or something um and and it's been a really really nice uh journey because when you 
when you have all your you think you you have all your skills like technical skills that develop you you're always learning but there's there's a point like okay you have to specialize on something like to be on the next level that it it, it, it uh, even more so if you work in the camera department lighting department like it's you know there's a you reach a point that okay obviously I can still be learning but then there's there's this other like uh part of the of the business that I need to to develop you know even as a uh business person like you have to you have to be really conscious about like this is a business and you have to take care of your of your money you have to be a business person too so it's a it requires uh a lot to be a successful like filmmaker you know um so you have to to have what the technical is good but you have this other pay attention to this other uh skills that you 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 will need uh in 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 your career I also want to add, be, be open to defining what success means to you in any moment. Success is not like, success is not, uh, it's not always what you think it should be when you first start out, right? Like success can be a lot of things and you can have a lot of, celebrate your many successes all of the time. Just celebrate it because like, this is hard. <laughs> Yeah. And every time you do some small thing or create one one thing or whatever, like you're, you're you're Sisyphus, like you're going up the rock. You may have hit a plateau. There's another plateau. You get to roll that rock up again. And um, but that's that's why we do this, because we're looking for that challenge and success. What success means is super important for you. And it's going to change over time and be a, let that happen. Yeah, and then uh, I think it's important to to raise the bar in terms of being successful as a filmmaker. And it's not only when when I heard stories about like people being successful as a filmmaker, but they suck at you know relationships, their their family, they, they you know like they are a mess like in their personal uh, area. So I, for me, that's not success. Like. You have mm -hmm. to be complete, you know, like you have to be successful as a person first. And then, yeah, if the if the words come, it's good, you know, just uh, cherish them. It's it's because it's a recognition of your of your hard work. But that's it. Like, yeah, they're not warm yeah. when you hug them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely need to be like, like a successful person. Uh, hum a successful human being first uh, than a than a filmmaker so that's 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 for me raising the bar like it's uh, mm -hmm. if you're only good at your job and you as I said like you suck your personal uh, stuff I mean next for me it's ne uh, who's who's next who's next who, how, who am I gonna try to to be like like him or like her like you know like whatever because i want to be a complete like i want the the the, the full package you know so it's yes. you you have to for that you have to do like a lot of internal work you know a lot of therapy a lot of <laughs> self-knowledge it's it's hard it's painful but it's it it, it pays off yeah so do you think that art, film, um, what we do has the ability to make and create social change? Um, I mean, the, the short answer would be yes. Uh, but we need to be, yeah, really, really careful with what we deliver, you know? Um, but I'm, I'm sure it, it's, it's really impactful, you know, uh, more so in, in the era of, you know, social media, there's uh, there's not only, you know, just movies or, or news anymore. Like it's, it's everywhere, you know, stories, videos, uh, it's everywhere. So mm -hmm. we really need to be super like careful and filter 
what we see uh because we we can we can also it can create a positive change but it it can create like like it can it can harm you like a lot if you're if you don't filter uh those those messages good so um i think we need to be as filmmakers we need to be more responsible than ever like uh think it so twice before delivering something uh seek for advice uh seek for uh maybe yeah mentoring uh when you have a final piece or something like uh, seek for 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 feedback that can uh help you deliver the 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 right message uh and yeah definitely i think that's a it's a powerful really really powerful tool uh even if if you're not like seeing right away the 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 change but but long term it does it it it, it does it has a, a capability of of creating uh change and impact in in people in the way we think the way we see things now and then the the uh yeah, I think good messages are timeless. So it doesn't matter if you if you watch the any like documentary in the eighties or the nineties. Uh, if they are a good piece, if they are a good message, if they are they are timeless. They are evergreen, you know. So that's that's the that's the power and the beauty of of filmmaking. You know, you can you can make a, a timeless piece, a timeless uh, powerful message. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's 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 needed to to reach probably um, smaller or minorities. Like I think uh, we are not also like just filmmakers. We are uh, I think probably I would say like opinion leaders because. What we're delivering through our social media, it, it's gonna it's gonna impact someone. We have to be really really careful because we're all we're all the time at, at least in, in in my experience, I, I I'm delivering all the time, like my part of my work. So I have to be really careful with what I spread, you know, uh, on my social media because we're we don't even if we don't have like a big audience uh, as a you know, on, on Instagram, on Facebook or whatever, that's, we are like, a, like a small, like TV channel, like in the eighties, you know, like you never know who's going to hear, you never know who's going to watch and you, you never know who's going to impact that message. So yeah, we as a filmmakers, we have the, we have to be responsible of what we spread uh, in terms of our, of our work. And, but definitely I think it, 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 creates change you know when I first started I I that's why I why I came into this I said I'm going to change things that need changing I'm going to make people know and um I hope that people walk away from whatever I create expecting what they know and coming away with more than what they thought they knew are you making anything that's or how like are, do you want to make anything that's going to make an impact like a social impact like that yeah, for example, you, you always like as a filmmaker, you you're always trying to keep the, the the dream, the dream alive. Like we're also, uh, if if you love documentaries, you're also like a probably an activist, you know. Uh, even if 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 even if it's only on social media, right. uh, but if you're yeah, if you're working towards uh, social change, you need to to keep that dream alive that it's gonna change or at least it's gonna affect someone and then it's gonna do like this chain effect, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, uh, there's there's been a like a hype on this documentary here in Philly. It's called Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia. It's, it's, a, it's a game word that we, that we use, like I, I suggested to, to the director to, uh, super talented director, uh, Kyra Knox, um, she's emerging. And then 
I said, like, did, did, did you hear what Trump just said, like, in the elections? Like, yeah. So it was a pretty popular phrase that he, he said, like, yeah, bad things happen in Philadelphia. So we use that, like, to, you know, to contrast with, uh, at first I said, like, yeah, it, bad things happen, but good things happen in Philly. What about that name? And then for marketing strategy, like, it worked better, uh, bad things. But uh, the fact that there's a there's a there's a, a guy that there's a, a you know organizations trying and fighting the real fight uh, you know on the ground to mm -hmm. fight against guns gun violence. I don't know if there's a solution. I don't know if there's ever gonna be a change uh, on that. But you can't you can't you cannot kill the hope of change. Yeah. You know you have to at least keep that that dream that spark alive uh that if you put something uh out there uh a good like a strong message someone is gonna say like let's let's try let's keep trying together yeah. to, you know so i think that's uh, that's the hope that's the hope you know? it is yeah we're working on uh on this documentary about my daughter, like uh, she was diagnosed on, with autism. So it's it's more of a, pro probably it's it's more about spreading information and telling parents not to freak out. That I think that's probably the message because it's about the uh, her her and her mother's journey through uh, since the diagnosis until she's got into uh elementary school so it's uh, like a three-year process of of digesting the 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 diagnosis so it's not that bad you know i mean yeah i we were lucky we because she she doesn't need like as much as as you know help as other autistic kids uh yeah we were so lucky but that was our case you know so uh it I think it's it's the same, like it's the same like with the, with gun violence. Like it's just keeping the 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 spark alive of okay, we're gonna reach someone that and when they see the, the film, when they see the, the, the final product, they're at least they're gonna feel like okay, it's it's like you said, like this empathy space for everyone, you know, like it's an, an empathy uh, or like a relief. You know, like okay, uh, I I I feel I felt connected with this, and and then I, it it made sense to me, like yeah, and that and, and if you're affecting just one person, I think that's that's enough, that's enough. Yeah. Hopefully more, hopefully more, hopefully millions, yeah. but it's one at a time, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you said that because I was just thinking like the two things you named is grassroots work. So like right in your community, you can literally impact immediately in your community. If everybody in their community that was suffering the same sort of thing looked at that story and said, wait, we can do this. And the other thing is you make a feature, you make a story about somebody who's doing that work. Talk about keeping hope alive, right? Like it, that's tough. That's a tough thing to face down every day and to hold that much space for your entire community to fight against some something that's imposed systemically on your community to say, I'm going to fight this every day, wake up and decide to fight is a long journey. And when somebody points a camera at you while you're doing that, you it's inspiring. I mean, you're about to live on in this message and like you're about to get immediate validation for the thing you're fighting for. I mean, nothing beats validation of seeing the, your community shift and people start to live in a love and start to, you know, reject violence. That's that's the reward. And when you tell individual stories of these struggles to, for somebody who's going through something similar to not feel alone, to feel validated, to see like the ugly parts of it, the the good parts of it, and to know like this is just an, this is just the life I have. Um, 
that's inspiring and to make it as cathartic and to all like everything that we're talking about that enacts change is all comes down to do we care about each other and ourselves and uh, it's hugely powerful and it's it's you know just even talking about it just like makes me want to tear up because it's like that's why we spend all of our time doing what we do even if we're the like I mentioned earlier like working on a silly show well can it afford me time to go into my community and showcase somebody can can we tell the story of somebody doing something their own way to keep something alive that's that's like the core of humanity so yeah I mean it is super powerful um and, and it it's funny too that like I think like there's movies and documentaries that do things that do that and they just really sneak it on you and I think those are really great they really sneak it on you you know um and you think you just watch something that's like making you smile and before you know it you're like you're just you're giving your hand to somebody who needs it and one one at a time you know without the individuals as the part of the collective, you don't have the collective move. Ah, this is, this is, um, this has been incredible. I like, I could talk to you forever, but I think they want to make an episode out of this. (laughs) So, so maybe like, it's not like a four part series. So I think it's time to call it. You think it's time to call it martinis up. (laughs) All right. So first question. All right. It's going to you. I think it's going to both of us, but I'll ask you. What do you do to turn off your work brain? Um, I I would love to do that more often, but yeah, definitely. Um, how do you say this? Like, I need darkness. I don't know why. And music. Yeah. So blackout, and then listen to. Uh, my favorite music or I don't know, maybe new uh, artist or something like that's, that's something that I want to do more often. Definitely. I, Is that I, like meditation? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Meditation. Yeah. I mean, I love to also, you know, go for a quick run and then, but I need to really, really need to be, you know, only with my, you know, with my thoughts, not technology. Because technology, it's it's always, I feel like I'm always connected, you know, to, and I think like this anxiety of you know, uh, replying to messages or something or just checking Insta, I'm, I'm really, I have to, <laughs> I need a detox from, from, from that, but yeah, definitely, yeah, uh, meditation, uh, a little bit, you know, if it's in a dark room and then lis- listening to music, good to good music, that's, that's yeah. amazing. That's an amazing yeah. feeling yeah okay 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 okay. so uh yeah same question to you uh veronica what do you uh what do you do to turn off your work brain i really want to define work brain because the short answer is i don't i'm always in my imagination which is my work but um but to stop thinking i usually i meditate a lot yoga running the ocean uh, living by the ocean has been a blessing. I jump in there and I don't think about work at all. Uh, camping, the river, anywhere, nature. The short answer is nature. Uh, all right, next question, next question. You go first. Yeah, I go first. Who is your favorite film TV character? Who is my favorite film and or TV character? Oh, my favorite film or TV character is Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> who is your, who is your favorite film and TV character? I actually thought about it. Uh, I don't know why it it came to my mind. Uh, this movie uh, with Denzel, uh, Denzel Washington uh, on Man on Fire. Like he's, you know. Creasy? Uh, Creasy is his name. <laughs> with Dakota I Fanning. <laughs> is it the- I love him on that movie. So yeah, I think. I mean, he's I, great. I would, yeah, I would live in that. I, I would play that character. Definitely, yeah. It's a bad ass in them, yeah. We have a very different approach to that. (laughs) You want to save a little girl and I want to have a chair with a mouth. Yeah. (laughs) Last question. 
Oh yeah. goodness. If you had to go on a reality show, which one would it be? <laughs> oh my God. I've been thinking, but I, um, I'm always like, since I'm all, I'm all for new experiences, like would be awesome to be on this, uh, like, uh, you know, this, uh, extreme, uh, fishing uh experience you know like on on i don't know like a remote like you know place with like with survivor the, is that not survivor but the, is there the, another the, one that's fishing this, this, yeah this fisherman that they are always like oh yeah oh, yeah, oh. yeah 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 that, oh, that was, the crab fisherman the crab fisherman they they live for what like called alaska month on that. That deadliest be, catch you know, yeah you'd that want to be on the, deadliest catch yeah let's do it yeah 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 yeah, I don't know, oh. like it's extreme, but I, yeah, I would, would love to do that. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like Amazing Race would be, would be fun to be on because like, um, you're just like, I feel like that's my life. I'm just like wind up in a place when I'm like, oh, I got to figure this out. <laughs> right. And that's how you meet the most amazing people. Yeah. Speaking of meeting amazing people, you know, I um I've never met an individual on like a public forum interview process before. Really? <laughs> but you made it very easy. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you. You too. You too. It was an it was an amazing experience. Yeah. Talking about new experiences. Yeah, this is my first time. It was <laughs> kind of like a blind date, blind date or something like uh but it was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid the fact that I know a lot of like people will listen to us. <laughs> Thank you for listening to season one of Forte. The Forte podcast is a production of Maestro Filmworks. Special thanks to this season's guests for sharing their stories and experiences. And to our dedicated team who brought this series to life. Follow at Forte Pod on Instagram for bonus content.